Hello there everyone and welcome back to one of my favorite mods of Hearts of Iron 4. Do you know, but last time, at the end of the last episode, I read about our day in course. So if you like to read this one again, please go right ahead, but we can either choose and there's a stark difference between the National Guard and the present walls. Therefore, the blame lies within the actions of mismanagement of local powers, which is very true. And versus, in conclusion, the protest group that formed at Little Rock was illegal and thus received the full implication of the law, which is the best choice, in my personal opinion, because that makes the most sense. But, we're going to be nice, and there's a stark difference between the National Guard and President Walls, of course. He doesn't control everything. He gives the states usually the powers to decide for themselves, as we're threatening action, but on the high ground. Dr. Sadowski, the doctor of law and graduate from Harvard University, who was serving as the leading defense attorney, finally sat down after a long hammering into the Senate over the beginning of the trial after the man took a seat. The Senate responded to his opening with a stern silence. Some more inexperienced politicians may have been intimidated, heck, even scared by the imposing sense of dread that followed, but not George Wallace. No, President Wallace stood by. A single thought that journeyed through his mind, the roaches are scared. Wallace took a good long while to enjoy his first victory in what's believed it would be a complete landslide of a trial, to be quite honest. Wallace thought it was if there's any time to enjoy this entire ordeal, it'd be now. Sadowski leveled the opening uh, of the prosecution, with nailing the reasoning behind his innocence, and attempting to influence a return to the reason for the most powerful lawmaking body in the free world after a complete trial by media already seemed to have occurred. But, unlike Dr. Sadowski, Wallace had no in effect, which he held dear to his heart. There wasn't any reasoning with his blood-sucking politicians in Washington, especially when riled up against a man who tore them in their anti-American antics down. Who's to say that some of the those senators up there are plotting not to not listen to it for the entire trial up until the final vote? Where the name Walsh will ring out to them and they'll vote guilty, no matter with any luck the Supreme Court Chief Justice is up there is going to ensure that this remains as fair as possible and none of the circus acts that his opposition has thrown out so far will endanger his chances. Wallace knew that this was just the first battle in the entire war, nevertheless. If this battle was won, Wallace and Sadowski were going to make sure that none of the characters in here looking to tear him down would get the chance. One point one for Wallace on diplomacy. Cities of Michigan never startled fell apart, but New York City frightened him. It was too fast for him, being whisked from the airport to each successive location at a disorienting pace. First, it was a luncheon with local unions and a speech. There followed a meeting and a speech with urban activist Jane Jacobs, and a meeting with the press club before a final appearance outside the New York Midtown Hilton. After delivering some impromptu republic remarks, Senator Hart and his wife retreated into the welcoming safety of the hotel's ballroom in the party waiting inside, at long last, slot, the beleaguered candidate downtime if only. An hour of handshaking and personal politicking following the rivaled the day's engagement for the tendium, or tedium, pushing the candidate's public face to its limits. Then two taps on Hart's shoulder, Senator Hart inquired someone from behind, if I may, if I may steal you. When he turned again to repeat the gre greeting cycle, he was shocked to see Nelson Rockefeller extending his hand. Furthermore, the governor of New York was not alone. By his side was a pudgy man with horn-rimmed glasses, short, waxy hair, and a face devoid of expression. Fell apart, this is Dr. Henry Kissinger. Rockefeller gestured for the two to shake hands, which they did before continuing. Dr. Kissinger's work through the Rockefeller Foundation has provided insight on foreign policy to every president since Eisenhower. And the governor placed his arm around Kissinger, winding up to his pitch crescendo. Not only does it seem natural that your administration continue the tradition, but also perhaps a doctor could graduate to working for you directly. Staff in the staff department or state department was a very it was a way away, explaining hard, who started on excuses before the tilt then silent, or till then silent Kissinger spoke up. Strong foreign policy requires authority. I would only work for the president directly, Rockefeller added, as an advisor of White House staff. State doesn't suit Henry. I could see Meriden adding to the heads of foreign policy discussion, but it still remained too early for commitments. Furthermore, he was tired and wanted to sleep. I'll think about it, offered the candidate, and for now, that was that. On to the next circle, as we are still in, deep in Africa, where witnesses walk. Uh, the Supreme Court Chief Justice was the first to speak, stating, The prosecution and the defense have each laid their initial foundational arguments. Now the trial should move forward to the cross-examination of the witness. As it stands in the United States law, the prosecution shall begin to cross-examination first. Great, thought Walls. Now they're going to get the blacks to go up there and cry about their friends. Dr. Sadowski worked to call on the president, whispering it that until they get a picture of you with a rifle pointed at those students, you have nothing to do with this. The first one, the prosecution called up was a National Guardsman, Douglas N. McConnell. The one who was too scared to do his order, some representative from New York, was in charge of questioning the man, Corporal McConnell. You expressed a great deal of emotional turmoil following the bloodshed at Little Rock Central High School. Who would you say you're most frustrated at after all this? The senator asked. Well, you see, sir, that's a lot of... But you could say that frustration within myself can be pointed towards some of the men that day, but more importantly, the ones who fought the protesters, who wouldn't let the National Guardsmen present present do their job, and while I'm frustrated myself for having been so confused in all of it, I kind of responded, got them. Sadowski whispered to Wallace, knowing that a corporal was raised to respect authority and would be scared of speaking against the commander-in-chief, this high superior. The prosecution would now like to call for Mr. Percy Jameson, boom, the New York representative. That media sensation, the black who has survived all the shootings, let's see where this goes, thought Wallace. Mr. Jameson, would you point towards the policy of segregation held by the Wallace administration against African Americans such as yourself and the rest of your friends who died that day as of being a drug cause for this massacre? Asked the senator. I, uh, well, my friends, I, we, uh, <clears throat> felt very upset about where the man 
about the men who fired on us that day, especially the officers out there who ordered it, Jameson responded. Thinking that a young kid like him would point blame at the President of the United States in a room full of hundreds of most powerful lawmakers in the land, big mistake for them. They're winning the case for us, but we'll see. Nothing is guaranteed as we are threatening action. Time, Our time to fight. Supreme Court, just a long a brief period for the defense to gather its potential plan for the cross-examination of evidence presented by the prosecution. Sadowski and Wallace knew they may have gained some ground in the prosecution's cross-examinations, however, the case has, can't survive on the holes within the prosecution alone. Men have been sent to their deaths for less. No, it's time to gather a solid plan surrounding the next period of trial. Sadowski had generated a plan he and the rest of the team called brilliant as they looked to like they were about to start patting each other on the back. Sadowski was going to call upon an unnamed staff member within the administration to grill into the man and try to psych him out into revealing faulty memories regarding, regarding anything, even possibly connecting the administration or the president to the ordering of opening fire in regards to the current laws of segregation in the school areas. That way can show a general inconsistency of information provided by such witnesses and eliminating the potential for the prosecution. Next is going to, of course, call First Lieutenant Victor Thornton to the stand. He already seems up his own butt about his innocence about shooting a bunch of kids, so if we use him, we can show that peaceful protests among the African-American students, they were a lot more bloody than the media claims it to be. Plus, if they're disgusted, no matter what, Thornton's statements will be in pride of his own actions, distancing us away from his orders in all regards if things go the other way. Wallace took a few moments to think about the plan when an idea struck him. Sadowski, we aren't going to use a kid, Jameson, Wallace said. Well, we weren't planning to. Why? He responded. Because if we poke holes in his claims, we succeed in showing that he and the media blew his credibility out of proportion. And show that my policy about segregating their kind is right, showing that they can't be trusted. Sadowski and the legal team had to take a minute to process Wallace's radical proposal for defense, because it could actually make sense due to the segregation arg argument. The time was running out. Uh, so, on Miss O, Mr. Jameson's testimony has been made irrelevant on account of his fallacious memory and character. Thus, our staff members have been proven invalidated when First Lieutenant Thornton for the notion of independent command. Small pledge center support the president. We'll redecide to support him. Oh, we need political power. Um, either choice we make is probably not going to go very well, and I did say just in case, because I, I like Wallace, you know. I, I, I've established that several times throughout this campaign, but he's one of my favorite characters in Tino, and I want to be safe for now, even though it'd be better to get impeachment, but whatever. Um, I have to just finish up some coffee that we do have here, so. I did do Jameson before his testimony, which will work well, but do that one. Let's do the bottom. Let's see what happens. As we're still trying to help out the economy and whatnot and lower debt and whatnot. The bell stall. Well, that's the concluding statement offered by the defense of President George C. Wallace. Both parties involved in House Resolution 519. Once more titled, Impeaching President George Wallace have offered the testimony and effort to settle the case over the removal of President George C. Wallace from the position in office as President of the United States. He was standing in the United States Senate showing how to prosecute or proceed to act as jury in the official decision between the innocence and guilt held by George C. Wallace and the potential mishandling of his duties as president. But first, we'll offer an intermission between now and the upcoming final vote. President Wallace and his legal team realized that the town was running out and gathering potential support against those looking to destroy the name of George C. Wallace forever. However, it would be unwise to treat the intermission as a mere break to catch your breath and make any less prayers. No, this intermission was to be one of the most dynamic points of the entire trial, according to Sadowski, and Wallace enjoyed the prospect of potential victory behind in their grasp, or being in their grasp, no matter how desperate the situation may have been at the time. Thus, Sadowski and the rest of the team began their plotting and scheming for the president, while Wallace himself enjoyed the quietness. Finally, those old assholes won't be on their guard. Oh, how they realize their mistake in an early conviction of the one and the only George C. Wallace. Oh, how they'll realize they didn't want those kids dead. How the taste of progress will be sweet once he claws his way out of here. On the other end of the table, the team of attorneys were worried. The estimations uh, weren't concluding enough results. Had they done enough to secure the president's victory? Anything close to it? Only time could tell now. A land survey, though. Stop here. The jeep halted on a clearing above a ridge overlooking a river on whose banks a village lay. The sounds of life were a mere whisper at the distance. The two men stepped out of the vehicle, shirts stretched by the intensity of the sub saharan sun. One hunched, examined the soil by crumbling it in his hands. His two fingers ground the dry, reddened dirt into fine grains of dust, leaving wispy trails draining into the earth from which it came. It seems about the right type of soil, the hunched man said. Just needs a little bit of water. Without reverie inclined with the gesture of his finger, it will be set. The river trees will grow well here. How much of the land do you reckon Firestone will take, his companion said, eyeing the village with binoculars he held. Rough estimation. Oh, well, the other man stood up from here and indicated the edge of the jungle to here. His hand swept through the village to reach the other side of the vegetation. I reckon that'll make him happy. And the village? And yeah, what about the village? Is it going to be a problem? No. Of course not. As we want more political power, as always, but uh, Congo, Congolese Civil War, we don't really care. Ah, reconstruction efforts. Improves food security? Yes. Recruit local militias? Yes. Invite DuPont to West Africa? Oh, you betcha. Oh, is that lowering everything else? Uh, that might be. Uh, economic progress is super important. Uh, 165 days. 
Uh, we're planning to around economic and military strength, abstract so the consolidation of the authority of the Allies, and contribution towards that goal. Focus on increasing our progress while preventing it from lowering all within our limits, limited time window. Uh, having a consolidation progress of at least 90% will guarantee our success plan. Is at 52.5%. If not completed, we'll lose a chance to entrench our influence there, which will suck if we can't get that done. So, but we'll see how things are made. Uh, as I trip through the plantation, she saw those dark little hands reach out to the cocoa beans, machetes in hand, smaller than the girth of the handles, swinging upwards, cracking through the rows of plants. She saw them cut the beans and grind them to find dust, a patchwork of calluses on the palm of their hands, so young and yet so old. She made deals to get here. A lieutenant down the road, some one hundred twenty dollars under the table, and on, she, and on she rode to the Hershey plantation down south where she stayed. Camera, she said. Lieutenant shrugged. She carried one Polaroid with her anyway, taking pictures of things she'd rather forget, searing in color the things she saw. She saw those little pictures crawl out of her Polaroid, horror etched across every corner, mundane and plain. She stared at those fingers again, noticing those missing fingers, the scars of slashes, uh, rendering through flesh. She quizzed the children. Early risers against her own will. Small hours in the morning. She woke up. They woke up. Straight to the plantation, no playtime. None are older than nine. She asked them if they had seen their parents. A shake of the head. Have you seen? Have you ever eaten chocolate? Another. They went back to town half an hour later. Sounds growing amidst the rustle of the underbrush. In a room, she wrote, The Lady of Liberty, the face. Wolves in the hunt. A break from the ongoing tensions of the decisions regarding the final vote had arrived. Wallace and his team attempted to look valiant under pressure, but the cracks were visible. Luckily for them, the same happened to be true for the other side. The senators acting as a jury happened to be dealing with one of the most stress ridden and difficult and controversial votes of their lifetimes. Having said that, the darker side of the such supposedly valiant leaders of the country were beginning to show everywhere. Shadows lie everywhere when the light of the innocent is snuffed from the world, and one of the attorneys on the team defending Walls beckoned him closer, protecting him against inquisitive ears of the room. Finally, Walls had gotten close to hear what the man was so worried about telling him about. The now news he heard back was well worth effort. Some of the senators aligned with the nationalists of the National Progressive Act had been discussing and voting in favor of the impeachment and removal of Walls from office. Walls knew fell out of his chair, crushed over the news, the treason, betrayal. Have these senators had no honor left at all? Effing vultures, why wouldn't they help me? They supported me and everything that's happened so far. Wallace whispered loudly, the lawyer seeing tears well up in the president's eyes. Sir, the best estimate I can offer you is that if you, the vote happens to condemn you anyway. They do not want to be lumped in with those who wish to support you, sir. The president had contained himself from smashing the top of the table with his fist. This wasn't right. They were allies. Heck, some of them were having friends, people you shake hands with and talk about the big game with. Wallace thought, fine, fine. Dudes want to kick a dog, dog while it's down? Okay, what are our options here then? Wallace asked. Well, we get them to organize a small meeting in order to win back based on virtue and sway them from the current mindset, or the attorney said, or effing what? Wallace asked. I'm not sure. They run him up, we need him. We don't need him, right, Sadowski? Uh, round about. We got enough political power. I want to keep an eye on this. Discussion on the Democrats. With another instance intercession came another discussion on the potential strategies in garnering favor among the leeches and formal attire calling themselves senators of the United States. Yet the National Progressive Pact managed farewell in the recent years of the rise of president of the same party, however. Wallace knew the sad truth that they wouldn't be able to rely on everyone just from the MPP, especially those who already hated Wallace's guts despite him being the reason for the successes. Dr. Sadowski and President Wallace talked uh, between one another on the potential action they needed to take. Together they saw the same unfortunate truth and that truth the potential need for a redirection. However, the only one ally may fall more rise. The RDC may be harboring promises of stability and steady progress for a united, truly united America, however. What about the underbelly of such claims? What about those strong conservatives among the Democrats, the ones who promised the constituents a free and liberty-filled life during their time being one of the two of the one of the two greatest representatives of the State of the Union? What if such sympathetic characters manage to be swayed under the pleas of a bullied and harassed Southerner who has fought gallantly in protecting the freedoms for the people of the United States? The media has always destroyed any sense of peace in the realm of private life, and why allow the political partisanship to tear apart a genuine and honest man, looking to provide a better life for the true patriots out there who hold such traditions dear? The plan was organized. These conservative RDC members will hear the cries of the president and surely come running towards the support, right? You know there's a catch, Sadowski said. You're ground a base of supporters out there in the Senate watching the proceedings in your defense. If they catch you trying to win over the RDC, even if they were conservative RDC members who were close to the nationalists anyways, they aren't going to be happy. The gamble. The centerpiece of life's ability to exploit the nature of chance of bringing someone to the top or absolutely destroy them, and now the president had to measure. I just had to play this one out. Get those conservatives on our side. Get them on our side, boys. This is a big old thing here. The vote of fate. Finally, the intermission was coming to a close for the prosecution defense now, rather than whispering and cozying up to smug politicians. President Wallace and his team of some of the best legal minds of the country could finally bear witness to the fate that their work had consigned them to. For President Wallace, the fall from residency would spell doom for the legal team just the same. Wallace's foot had been tapping incessantly under the table upon which his legal team had sat. All this work within the office of President, all this effort, all the good I've done, and now they want to stab me in the back, the animals, the disgust of it all. President Wallace thought to himself, he felt his chest tight, maybe it was the stress of it all, affecting his heart at this point. Maybe it was getting difficult to breathe, the President stood resolute, even as the veins pushed out along his neck. I did everything I could for the people of America, but they, but no, they wanted to paint me as some monster at the end of the day, the cutting of boats, and occasional yeah or nay. 
interrupting the president's train of thought, causing him to tighten his grip around the table as he sat, now showcasing white knuckles to the entirety of the Senate. With every vote, the anxiety, fear, and anger grew within Wallace Tenfold. How could they do this, he thought. Do they realize the embarrassment of a second president removed from office in a row? Plus, what about LeMay? He's the one they really think is going to succeed and bring some imaginary greatness to America. The man can't run politics correctly. Good luck getting him to crap rainbows in a successful economy for the American people. Wallace waited. His legal team waited. The whole cabinet waited. The entirety of the American people seemed to be glued to their TVs, watching, waiting for what has become of the president. Sadowski had better have won this. Through fire and flame, steel grows stronger. Look at this. The Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court boomed out to the Senate chamber floor. The official votes regarding the guilt or innocence of found within President of the United States George Wallace have been collected to a final estimate. President Wallace sat nervously, clenching his fists until his knuckles grew even more white, almost frightening Dr. Sadowski. The numbers hardly mattered as they were muttered out of the old man's mouth. Only two things mattered. The first, not guilty verdict, counted by another count of votes, followed by the second declaration of not guilty. Wallace could hardly contain himself after hearing the Chief Justice utter those beautiful words, using the energizing victory to raise a victorious fist in the air. After a few minutes and pictures, Wallace took a great amount of time to shake hands of each and every attorney on the legal team with an especially emphasized expression of thanks offered to Dr. Sadowski for managing to bring together the case and beat out the United States House of Representatives and Senate to achieve a secure victory for him. How do I go about paying you back after all this, Doc? Wallace asked. Sadowski responded with a prompt, Why thank me? Yes, your books will do that, along with the paycheck. All around the defense, the representatives in charge of bring the president to trial shared looks of shame and baff bafflement, as if each were asking how on earth did Wallace manage to slip out of that, of that one. No matter what, though, Wallace was quick to show face by giving thanks to all that stood behind him. This was only emphasized when the president walked outside along his team, greeting the team of reporters he usually shoot away. This time, all the news stations would hear the proclamations of innocence by President George C. Wallace. After returning to the Oval Office to complete the rest of the workload cut out for the day, the President of the United States retreated to his bedroom with his wife, Lorene, where they enjoyed a good night, filled with a word that the couple had not heard in months. Tranquility. Wallace now, Wallace tomorrow, Wallace forever, at least until January where he's out of office, hopefully. Still minus 13. We're going to keep working on this one. No matter what happens, George, you done it? You saved America? I can't wait. I'm going to go, but this please your head. That was one heck of an episode. I mean, my God, I know I called the last episode. You know, they're out to destroy George Wallace and whatnot. But like, my God, oh thank God, no more. Pulls it up today. That's nice. Pay that debt off. Debt in my America? Don't you dare. Can't get any more political party yet. Home front. Da da da. There you go. Looking good. So this one's not. There's a point looking at that. This one's not bad. The Congo front. I don't really care about since we're helping them out anyway. So. Um, th that being said, can we finally send planes or what? You guys can go down there. I mean, I want to send some cast, don't get me wrong, but what can? And uh, you know what? It sucks. Can do port and pain. A little bit, a lot of pain here. Well, that's for sure. Jim Crow's clutch. Um, how else can we piss people off? Our union voters start spending uh, no more. Decreased cost, defederalization, social swing, philosophical flock, and of subsidies. Conservatives will just like this. But more. And I, want, I don't want any more unity. Big basis hates us, but they will love it. Lower the amount of claimants. Or business subsidies. Big business likes this. We'll spend a lot of money. I do want to do more stuff like this, though. Towards the steel belt. Better reputation. We'll probably go to the right, underprivileged stuff. Segregated job core. Question about the courts. Big business will hate that. Hurrah, hurrah. Soft loves Wallace. The American dream. That'd be nice to get to, too. But we can't. We don't have time for that now. Um, states on salaries. States can pay in full. Maintain educational subsidies. Alienating people with extremes. Look a little better in northern states. How much do school costs? This will alienate them though. Lower subsidies. EFRA fails class in Congress. Um, this will help us get blue collar workers back. We don't want that. Uh, why the heck is the federal government expected to give out cash for the salary of every single gosh darn teacher in the country? Imagine these kinds of 
day-to-day -day expenses is much better left to the local state administration. They'll know much better how to spend it and how to get the money back than some Washington pencil pusher. Not to mention, looking at how much money the federal government can save on it. Alright, production. Still minus 13. Um, solid South is solid. That's all I can say. It's very solid. Popular Republic of the Congo? Then why are they war? They're so popular. Uh, what else can we do here? Ah, yes. Nice. Cool. If you move that fast, be great. Jim Crow's clutch. Yes, please. Well, that'd be fine. I'm just, just fine and just kill them all. I mean, that's just my standard of doing stuff, probably. Benny? Benny! Oh, we're fighting up there, too, huh? Nice. Find him, kill him. Confessions of a rubber worker. Are we ready? The correspondent said, raising an eyebrow at the interpreter. The man nodded. All right, before them was a Bambara man dressed in a plain white shirt. His sleeves rolled up, exposing a mosaic of knife cuts underneath. The correspondent met with the interpreter's eyes. <clears throat> the show was on. He clicked the record button and a cassette tape. Tell us your name, the correspondent said, inclining to the uh, interpreter. Dara. Dara, thank you. Now, Mr. Dara, I understand that you work for the Firestone Natural Rubber Company. Does the company take care of its employees? Do you and your co-workers obtain sufficient incentives to keep working? The interpreter translated the queries to him. The Bambara man looked at him with mocking grin. He began speaking, he says, the interpreter said. Before this point, he worked in the rural farms near the rivers. When the war ended, most of them looked for a job, any job. Firestone took up that deal. There was a glint in Dyer's eyes. Now they shouldn't have. He said silent afterwards. Why not? The man met the correspondent's eyes, sighing and continued. The only center they keep here is with guns. Bad news. Soldiers rushing from ditches to make sure they tap every little tree properly. They got women and children in the sides too working. Do you have any further questions? Yeah, sure. We'll make sure this reaches the states. Mr. Dyer, Dyer, count us. A bombshell report. But look at that money. It's not much, but hey. Get down here first, and then you go in there and kill them all. A slice of the Congo, Martin's mind, fighting becomes synonymous with sitting men, sweating and digging holes. It seemed whatever, wherever Martin traveled, there was a new hole to dig, and another buck to sweat into. Heard about fighting down the line, and constantly been heard about distant gunfire. Not much, only a few putts of the busted car engine, that was the automatic machine gun, intertwined with the harsh whip cracks of a bolt action rifle, but even that was enough to keep him on edge and keep his mind occupied. The platoon seemed to share the same thoughts. Lieutenant Wallace rarely left his own dugout now, sticking as close as he humanly could to the radio set. They even commanded the newly, two newly enlisted inexperienced sergeants. Even most of the privates seemed tired, and they were all tense. Fights broke out between each other as much as they did with the enemy, whoever it was that day. Mark could recall fighting against half a dozen di uh, different armies and militias, from the remnant German colonial army to the infamous Congolese Popular Republic, plus a myriad of smaller bands such as our soldiers of Katanga. It seemed he had many problems as many he did enemies, and it was getting to him. He spied the enemy's front line. There was movement. Two men carrying a crate with a third watching over them. Martin tucked away with his binoculars with a sigh. They were too far away to engage with rifles, and they weren't a large enough group to just fire more to strike. Martin turned and left his weapon in the dirt, storming towards the entrance of the lieutenant's dugout. He said he needed to catch a break from the lines, and he'd only get it by force if necessary. Lieutenant, I'm going to say this once. Wall slammed into him, pushing him into the dirt, but barely seemed to notice as he stormed from this covered dugout. Gather your arms, men. A force of Azandalan soldiers across the Congolese Sea. Now taking a village to battle to our strategy. We're leaving this position within the hour. Martin's break would have to come a little later, it seemed. All's well that ends well. So, Jim Crow's clutch. You saved America. We went for states' rights. States' own salaries. And it's We could probably get maybe one or two more done. Uh, lower subsidies. Second thoughts. Pass a bill. Who do you work for? Yeah. Big business likes this, but I don't want to spend too much money. But we can if we have to. I don't care about that. Fight and tyranny. The Jobs Act. Hmm. Federal aid. Conservatives just like this. Cuts are not enough. Businesses need more money still, money that can be invested in more investment projects and spread out through the county for all to enjoy. Sadly, it's money that they simply cannot gather through their normal day to day operations. Hard working businessmen of America, your cries have been answered and the years of neglect have now ended. The federal government now must play a more active role in business. Keep it on this. Kill them all off down there. Cold War stuff. Debate with Philip Hart. Oh boy. Mm, we got all this stuff. Semi-modern tactical bombers. I love it. 
Senator Philip Park and President George C. Wallace walked slowly, almost reluctantly, towards each other, seeming to only touch palms briefly before turning to the podiums. Wallace's segregationism had viciously angered nearly everybody in the North, the sentiments shared by Hart, Wallace for his part. Barely had a sneer the latest Northern carpetbagger looking to trade on his beloved South. The debate particularly centered on the question of civil rights, and Hart did not hold back. President Wallace, I cannot understand why you insist on segregating in the 20th century. By what right do you seek to deny good, honest Americans their rights? Governor, I'm not surprised by utopian dreams. With all the books you've written, Wallace replied acidly. Come on, back to Earth. Governor, we are a union of states, and my constitu constituents demand that their rights be uh, respected. Who's rights, President Wallace? I'll make it simple. Do you stand by what you said three years ago? Hart snapped. A second passed, an eternity on stage. Wallace's eyes widened for a brief instant, then narrowed. Hardened. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever? Yes, I do. As much as I want to go with Wallace, I do want to get Hart, because we've gotten Wallace several times, and I love Wallace, but still. Oh, they're going to make a big old encirclement, aren't they? Keep going down and kill them all off. But happy October, everybody. It's going to be a good year for us. Thanks, hopefully. The demons convened. The talks went on for several weeks. DuPont and Firestone, two titans of American industry, said about the work. West Africa's a rich land, packed with fertile soil and sub waterways to support natural rubber growth. Firestone extracts rubber tap from the plantation of Mali, shipping them off to the plantations of Liberia. Though the rich man had suited Firestone in the past, the immense growth of the company's assets had meant that this process had become a bottleneck. Oh boy. The talks began when DuPont <clears throat> approached corporate leadership at the Firestone the company. Uh, they made a general, general, general gesture. If Firestone agrees on their infrastructure deal, DuPont will exclusively buy rubber only from Firestone's plantations, eschewing other competitors in the field. In exchange, DuPont will provide capital for the new highways, train networks, harbors, ports, and ships in tandem with Firestone's own contributions. And one condition became paramount for DuPont. Firestone only uses plants for rubber processing. Weeks passed and talks with in terms of specifics. The consensus did not change. When the hands glass of agreement, a dark circle closes upon West Africa. Nice. Also, we are currently at, what, 120%, which is kind of insane? So... Because right now, our average is 78%. Alright, so we do this. Prediction, minus 13. Good God, that's kind of hard to tell. We'll see. You guys are almost done down there. We're trying to kill these divisions down here, which would be good. As long as I keep moving that fast, hopefully not. Go and get rid of them. They're not going to take that long. It's advancing in. Good job. State's own salaries, my friends. I don't think it's going to do anything about this at all, is it? No. Um, states can pay in full. So that's going to be 35 days, which means the election's going to happen before then. Is there anything we can just blitz through quickly? Probably not. It's all 35 day focus is crap. Yeah. We got crud. Um, Business Subsidies Jobs Act. We'll try. We'll see what happens. Twelve Republicans. Everyone likes it, at least to some degree, so that's not bad overall. Stanleyville. Talk with Democrats. Nah, we don't need them. Not for now, at least. Nice. Well, we'll see how the election goes. I really want Philip Hart. I, I mean, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to get Philip Hart, basically. So. Polls are updated. I don't think it's going to really do very much. Minus 15, though. But that's still not enough. We're too successful with George Wallace. He's just a very successful guy, that's all. The dying cream. Uh, Tyler Link inside his fellow his couch. Carrying groceries upstairs, it's really a bit of strenuous task, but proven even more exhausting after a long drive to the next town over. But it's not as though they had a choice to make such a journey. After all, I had the only story that acknowledged him as a human being. On that day, Wallace had been announcing his victory in the last election. It felt a curious sort of denial about what the future could hold. The man had campaigned on a mad quest to ensure that the black population of America could never stay on equal terms with the white neighbors, and yet, as one of those Wallace had intended to condemn to a future of inequality, the teller assumed that somehow the realities of being at the home of a country as diverse as the United States would soften the invisible blow. Unfortunately, Tyler was proven wrong, of course. Um, then, uh, before the election, his hometown was mostly free of cancer that plagued the rest of the South. Now, thanks to the intervention of the, from the federal government, there was not a single business in his hometown that would allow him to walk through the door. He should have known it was going to end this way. Men such as Wallace would, 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 always went on about nebulous concepts like states' rights, when it was clear they all cared about was preserving racist institutions. While well, the government saw of interceding to keep Jim Crow alive, it seemed that Wallace had now dropped any and all pretense. Tyler was not entirely sure where to go from here. He supposed it was possible to skip town, move to a more welcoming area, but how long would that be before the president came for them, too? Tyler felt like less a human with every day that passed. Segregation forever. So be it. Things happen. 
at false prism. If you want to bet that, please go right ahead. Nice. Get your butt back up here. We need you now. Happy November. Now, if Wallace wins, which I, I like. I wanted to win, in all honesty, but I don't. I really don't feel apart more. Um, I'll use Khan's commands. I'll do something, something real funky, delicious. Ah. We'll see. That's economy, darn it. Oh boy. Where is this deadline? Current consolidation is 108 percent. Jesus Christ. Oh, yep. Obo it is. Or abo. Obo, abo. God's freedom. Murky, tired water issued upstream from the DuPont processing plant. Cattle lay on the sides, dying off by the dozen. The surrounding villages were empty. DuPont trucks carried them off to their plants all over the country, bowling them with promises of wage labor. Soldiers hurried workers into the plants, washing them over with machine guns. He, draped in a camel jacket and cl press clearances hanging between his shoulders, saw all of this. Army newspapers talked in boldface print that they were winning the peace here. All peace. Love, hearts, and minds, the stalks of trees leafless in the jungle heat. Spoke otherwise, the land burning with scars, dripping with blood, its rivers, coursing and flowing with waste, banks full of displaced people. He would never see what they see, understand what they understood. The war sowed the seeds of hope, he supposed. American soldiers, good heart boys, sent it down in clearings, a wash of fiery orange red. Fire sweeping through the woods before them, making for good stories, good photos. Here were men. They shall live and die free as their forefathers were. He saw those hardened eyes by the riverside. He shook his head, homecoming will be hard. A wash in the eye to conquest is a woe of the defeated. Beautiful. But the election, my friends. The warning. Oh. Oh, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. I think I read this one before. I could be wrong, though, so if you want to read that, please go right ahead. So, green campaign, some more. Prediction, minus 15. Oh, good God. Oops. Bongo, bongo, bongo. What did I think of this before, too? But the game card game took place every evening, when most of the soldiers in the company were off with the day shifts. Peter looked forward to that time every day. For a few hours, he could relax. The life of a soldier wasn't for everyone, but he found something here. An acceptance, brotherhood, something that he hadn't found in a long time. Uh, their conversations were loud, boisterous, and several hours later, I've become more introspective on what the future held after the fighting. Got a wife at home and a daughter, Jackson was saying. It'll be my first time seeing her. Yeah, same, said another one of them. Mine is a daughter. Writing letters isn't the same, you know. Always worry she'll bother sticking around for me to come home. Don't worry, I'm sure she will. She, she sure won't do that, Jackson said, patting on the shoulder as he played one of his cards. What about you, Peter? The man sitting near him asked. Got someone special you haven't told us about back home? Home. Peter resisted a grimace. Home? Now that was an interesting concept. No, there's no one there for me. No home there for me, he finally said, pausing briefly before it's time to finish. Once we're done, I'll stay on. A long pause. Germans left nothing for me in Russia. Here, I have something. A cause. Good people. He hadn't told them where he'd come from before. They thought they were, they'd always suspected. He looked down at his cards. I fold. That broke the introspective silence, and the game ended. As they set up their last game for the night, Peter mused that while he hadn't meant to share what he'd said, he was glad he did. He might not have a woman or nation to return to when all, his nation, when all this was done, but he was content with that. He had a cause now and friends. And really, what more did a man need? Political power, that's what a man needs. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, crap. All right, so, yeah, I think we... Yeah, of course, this is the South, so we'll see. Oh! Oh! Ooh. Ah, we got it! George Wallace, I'm sorry. L please, I love you. Election Day, 1968. President-elect, President Hart. Now, uh, we've done really well. I didn't even have to use any console commands or anything. The, what is this area? The East Coast? I would not call it, This is the entire East Coast up here. This is the Mid-Atlantic States. The Upper South? I mean, I guess you could call it that, but like Mid-Atlantic... This is definitely Mid-Atlantic, but it makes more sense because you have these states here. Indiana. Oh, good job, Indiana. Staying MPP. Uh, Deep South. Even Louisiana went RDs. And so did Texas, so... Interesting. And the Rockies, it's pretty split. The Great Plains is mostly Republican. I guess they include the Great Lakes states. Um, yeah, makes sense. It's almost a solid South, except Louisiana. Even though, good God, we have to deal with 50 nationalists. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's not going to be easy. But that was interesting. 46, almost 47 million votes versus 41.8. Wow. Good God. But it'll be interesting to see what we can do with... Uh, Text like all this, so I'm um, I'm really looking forward to it with Philip Hartz. Now, like I said before, at the time of recording, there is a little bit of bugginess with it apparently, and there's supposed to be a hot fix, but I don't have time to wait for the hot fix and redo literally everything we've done here, which sucks. And I can't blame the devs too much. I mean, there are always going to be issues that people run into, and that they, that's just a no. But Dream Act and a lullaby of Congress. 
How did the success of the local business relief act many pointed to an uptrend of the growth of the self-owned American businesses? With concerns of sisterly support in the federal government's power, Big Child put Americans full of the dream of founding their own businesses. And in a shocking victory day, President Wallace has found himself able to lay additional support towards local business, both large and small today. As a direct reimbursal of entrepreneurship in America, American Markets Act, or DREAM Act, issuing a new line of direct subsidies towards businesses in the American market, promoting further growth of local American-owned businesses. Nice, we get more growth. Awesome. Get more CASA, which sucks. But finding themselves triumphant over government-oriented position, the administration and President Wallace has come together to celebrate the victories for American business. As businessmen across the country cheer their homes and offices regarding their new line of payments straight from Washington, D.C. I could never complain about the dream. Getting paid by the American government to do as I always have and what I always do because it's what I love. Without the hassle of governmental crooks getting in the way, the President can be sure that he's owed another vote here in my shop and people who disagree can walk right out on if they are upset, says one Bostonian butcher as he cars and slices into a prime cut of pork. Where some find treasure, however, others find misery. In particular, many boys are concerned about the, over the sheer level of payment going towards the DREAM Act, continuously worrying regarding the potential loss of other government programs to make it up for. Look, I'm not one to get a political a lot, but how can I help myself to not get mad knowing what I have to run? I care for these people, and who knows what the president's going to say, or going to take away to pay for these businesses, says one nurse of an elderly home from Montana. Oh, how the American loves his cash. Hmm. They alienate them. States can pay in full. Lower subsidies. Hmm. Federal aid. Atlanta Cotton helping Dixie out. Increase miscellaneous costs. Georgia Steel Belt running a national campaign. Because at this point, it doesn't even matter. Well, we want to get as many of our guys still in RDs. So the Jobs Act. American dream has always been one that any man can achieve prosperity through hard work and determination. Consequently, we'll never get our, over our post-war malaise until we can get our unemployed youth into the workforce. President Wallace once again has a plan for that. Wallace will draft a bill to create the Job Corps, a federal program that offers free of charge education and vocational training to young people aged 16 to 24. This will allow good young men and women of the low income and good character to get the training they need to pursue a fulfilling career path, from wielding to nursing to seamanship. Wallace's Job Corps allow our young down and outs to find a job in their calling in life. Um... I don't want them to be more united. I like that poverty rate will slowly improve, though. A little more unified, which we don't want. Incentivize work. Lower amount we're spending on unemployment subsidies. Small back of the south. Increased costs. Land of cotton, probably. Underprivileged. And that's pretty much all we can do. Expand unemployment subsidies. Hurrah, hurrah. Of course, we can't get that far. I want to get down there, because that's really good to get, but land of cotton... Increased costs. I mean, they get more more GDP, which I do like. Went over to Western Democrats. No more handouts. Yeah, I just can't unify us. They will love us? Nah, can't do that. What do you work for yourself? Now, well, Social Security and Medicare are out of the way. Wallace can turn his attention back to defending freedom on the home front. Specifically, his plans to overhaul the American welfare state and replace with American welfare state. See? I've, ever, I've read this before several times, but federal aid is federal tyranny. It comes with too many strings attached and becomes just another way for Washington to force the South to be towed the liberal line. President Wallace is going to change that forever. Wallace will begin considering a revision of federal welfare laws to give states more control over how the welfare funds are allocated. He can either retain some federal funding for states' welfare while giving states more say over how it's spent, or he could just cut the strings completely and say, let states fund their own welfare programs. Uh, the latter would be the purest economic expression of his defederalized vision, but may prove to be a bridge too far for his rural white voters. Well, we'll see. Nice. Look at that. 20 progressives, 41 nationalists, which is better. Okay, so we have 37 RDs, 20 progressives. So, I mean, we're fine with all this now after it changed. That's just, you know, whatever. How's the voter base looking? So, they're extremely happy about segregation. They're unhappy about states' rights. They're going to pack which favors big business, slightly boosting the northern branch of the nationalists, but slowly dividing your pack and weakening your support base in the south. Interesting. Oh, the Japanese decided to show up, huh? Bombardi. Mumbai. That should be enough to help them out. There you go. So is that the end? That should be the end for that. 157%. Come on, man. Bro, come on. 90%. Happy December, everybody. Happy December. Man, how are we allowed like 40 minutes into this video? I don't understand. Bro. Let us declare it. Come on. This is bugged as all heck. 
back in control. The news reached the president soon after the announcement. The Congo War was over. For the first time in a while, there's some good news from there. Or as much good news as one could hope for given the catastrophe that had taken place since the OFN mandate had collapsed. Turns out the government had been established by the last remnants of the OFN mandate in contrast to Patrice Lumumba's own nation state had been able to resist con resist conquest. Not only resist, but win. The entire Congo is now unified under them, and now they were working to establish the same control of the region and nation. Uh, it was not an easy task, but the president was now optimistic that they would see more success than they had originally hoped for. It was especially good because it meant that America's path along with the wide OFN to Africa was not shut down. With a friendly government that could now establish American OFM presence and authority in Africa, the collapse of the mandate had been a disaster in most cases. It would be the end of it. However, they had now a second chance to try again, and it was imperative that they not be wasted. America's hold endures. Nice. Hey, more political power. Victory of the Federal Republic of the Congo. Time will tell. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with the Congo? Japanese sabotage effort. American military advisors. From the ground up, of course. And they put a bill committee. Look at this happy, smiling dude, Joseph. No unique focus street, but that's okay. Why not? Alright. 37 total, 61. Oh, we don't have 40, 90, oh, that's right. They still hold a lot of these coasts. It's a very divided nation still. Presidential election season's over. Very nice. Very nice. Fun specialized training? Oh, you bet we will. Trust the government increases. It's nice. Yeah, we've got 51 days left. We should be able to get that. I mean, there should be no problem with that, right? If we don't, then this is bugged as all heck, and we should be able to do it no matter what. They're still going. Slowly going. The Jobs Act. Wait, what type of jobs are we thinking about? Senate's just voted in favor of the Jobs Act. Granted, the Department of Labor the power to establish programs across the U.S. of A. to give unemployed workers and experienced youth a chance to work and help build a better nation for all. Originally denounced as populist, pandering, way too expensive, the federal government now has the tools in hand to directly employ thousands, building new roads, bridges, airports, sewer, and water systems, and so much more to reinvigorate America's infrastructure, while slashing the unemployment rate and getting many people the skills and experience they need. President Walsh has already announced that he'll be signing the bill in the Oval Office tomorrow with invited unit leaders and selected members of the public, and will direct the Secretary of Labor to form the task force to evaluate where the nation the Jobs Act will provide the most support. While there may be many smaller scale problems across the nation, the largest could be focused on either the Rust Belt Northern States due to the sustained economic downturn, or the perennially struggling South, giving support to those that long needed it. Let's get those shovels on the ground. States can pay in full. Yep. Hundred and sixty-five percent. How is that not good enough, my bro? We are current consolidation progress of 116. Bruh. Home front, smoke and mirrors, 55%. Fulbright. Uh, champion American victories. Stand against American imperialism. Leadership approval. Firm states' rights. Interesting. State Supreme Court's rarely conservative. Interesting. Interesting. Happy New Year, everybody. 1969. Nice. Interesting to see. Because I, I really don't know the deficits are. Um, how this is all going to turn out in the end. So, Bro, we don't get any decisions here. We should be able to consolidate out of this. Right? Right? Good God, I hope so. It's very annoying when you do everything right and it still doesn't work. Bro, come on, man. Consolidation is 123.75%. It's at 90%. Bro, bro. If not completed within 20 days, is at least 90% will guarantee the success of our plans. So if this is it's going to happen no matter what. We'll be consolidated under our influence. So we should be okay no matter what. 90%, 165%, bit extreme. But we do what we must. We're just spending a lot on the civilian stuff here. I'm putting up some more power plants too, because we could use the uh, power grid stuff. Which makes sense, you know. But, 
Oh, we're not going to be able to get the states can pay in full. Oh, maybe we can, though. Oh, maybe we can. Don't worry about this. This is looking really bad. Oh, my God. The bottom's getting better. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Building golden bridges. When he first woke to the auto pattern of raindrops in a muted cloudy sky, Philip Park could almost convince himself it was just another day. Perhaps he, could, he and Janie were back in Michigan for a holiday, or maybe perhaps back with the Senate committee meetings. The fantasy endured for a few moments longer before the president elect finally came to terms with what today would entail. He might have been there all day had Janie Hart not leaned over to deliver two taps on the shoulder of Philip. Yeah, she said, glaring with love, if you overthink this, you might make a mistake and never forgive yourself. She was right, he conceded. On the day as the door he roared on, Philip Hart held on to his wife's words, something sometimes sticking her hand in tandem. He said before the Supreme Court Chief Justice an audience that he left his hometown and affirmed, confirmed and promised to do his best before taking the stand and straightening his papers. Bearing that a speech must eventually be given, he cast his doubts aside and forced the words out. When my expiry has come, he said, he began, and the collective efforts of my career are weighed against my memory, I wish to be judged as good or bad. Our nations have not always been so kind, and many choose to judge based on race or welfare. There's a lure in blind hatred, and it is what we must overcome in the pursuit of a better country. His passion built slowly, and he continued to lament the injustice endured by those living in the belly of urban poverty or on the rights or on the ends of rural isolate. You'll be heard, he promised, just as you, the whole of America, will be part of our effort to build a nation where there is opportunity for all. The solution, Hart says, is a government that cares to invest in the country and protect its most vulnerable. If we're to aim to do good, our accomplishments will speak for themselves. President Hart faced his audience with disbelief at its scale and passion as applause, as applause electrified the air. His responsibilities as president had, had a face for the first time, and the office's pressure seemed more significant than ever. A failure meant disappointing them, then success would be his only option, with affection, respect, and esteem. So, at this point, we could not finish that last thing there. Philip Hart looks like a weird guy. And it looks like there's a whole stuff here. There's no URI bill being voted on. Um, heart monitor, of course. Status of reconstruction, which shouldn't be too... Oh, my God. Get a move on. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. There's so much to do here. But I'm going to save this for the next episode just because I want all heart to be under one. One big old thing here is we take a small little look-see into this focus tree, which... Jesus Christ. is going to be a lot. Breaking the heart of the world. So... Um, oh my god, what is this? The Second American Revolution. Jesus Christ. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, this looks extremely awesome. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we are going to screw up this a whole bunch. And see what we can do with the big heart. Or the pea heart. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.